Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Why miracles, healings, and deliverance? Why is this important? Because miracles, healings, and deliverance, they reveal the reality and the nature of God. God doesn't love just believers. He loves the whole world. The blind see, the deaf hear, the dumb speak, the lame walk, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. God's intent is for every believer to work the supernatural. So we need to get back to evangelism the way Jesus did it. Greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and spend this time with you in the Word of God. Thank you for being with us on the program. We're just taking time to talk about the supernatural through you as a believer. On our last program, we uh, outlined why we believe that the Lord Jesus desires uh, for the supernatural to be continued to be manifested or expressed through the church. He talked about the fact that he commissioned the 12 apostles, then he commissioned the 70 disciples, um, then he gave that John 14, 12 mandate for all believers across the church age. As, as long as he's seated at the right hand of the Father, this will be valid. Uh, then we talked about the great commission that he gave to the church. Uh, we see that in all the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and in the book of Acts, the, grace, the great commission is uh, packaged with the demonstrations of the power of God. And then be closed off by stalking or referencing the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are still at work in the church. I want to just pick up on that where we uh, left off and just elaborate a little bit more on the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now we know that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 11, the Apostle Paul, uh, he writes about the nine gifts of the Spirit, saying that all these things worketh that one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them as He wills. He, he, the Holy Spirit is still working those gifts. And uh, then he continues uh, uh, in that same chapter to talk about us as believers being the body of Christ and every believer having some function, whether the, the, whether the function is noticeable or visible outside or whether it's hidden on the inside. Uh, the, the, every believer has a function and no part of the body can say to another part of the body, I have no need of you. So uh, keep that in mind that our functioning in the body of Christ uh, really is, is in the context of the gifts of the Spirit or the gifts of the Spirit empower, uh, and, uh, empower our function in the body. We are not expected to be functioning in the body apart or aside from the operation of the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to the body uh, uh, for every member to perform their function. And later on in that same chapter, he talks about the uh, ministry gifts and also the membership gifts when he talks about the apostle, the prophet, the teacher. And he talks about administ administrations, helps, miracles, tongues, and so on. Uh, he's really referring to uh, the ministry gifts that we read about in Ephesians 4 and the membership gifts which we read about in Romans 12. That means all of these things are functions in the body of Christ. But I want to go to chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians because many people use chapter 13 to discredit uh, the gifts of the Spirit or to say that the gifts of the Spirit have ceased. Now, we would call uh, people who believe uh, in this uh, as cessationalists. That means they, have belie they believe um, that the gifts of the Spirit have ceased to operate and they are therefore are no longer in operation in the church today. And one of their arguments uh, is taken from 1 Corinthians 13, uh, where 
from verse 9, uh, you know, Paul continues talking about how we must operate the gifts or manifest the gifts in love. And then he says, verse 9, we know in part and we prophesy in part, meaning the gifts of the Spirit are, are all operations in part. They're a word of wisdom, they're a word of knowledge, uh, their prophecy is always in part. And then he says in verse 10, but when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part will be done away with. That means when what is perfect or complete or mature has come, then what is now operational in part will be done away with. So now many people use that verse in verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 13 and say, you know, uh, when we have received the Bible, the complete canon of Scripture, therefore, uh, once the Bible came into existence, we no, no longer need uh, the gifts of the Spirit. We no longer need prophecy and tongues and interpretation and so on. But really, that is not what Paul is referring to because we just read on the next few verses. What is he talking about when that which is perfect? He says there in verses 11, 12, he says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Verse 12, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. So the then that he's referring to is when that which is perfect has come. So what is the then? The then is when I, see, but then face to face. So really, uh, us encountering the Lord, meeting the Lord face to face. When we come into a place when we know just as we are also known, that is when what is in part is done away with. That is when that he, what, he, what he referred to as that which is perfect has come. So I want to make it very clear that uh, Paul explains to us what he means by when that which is perfect has come. He's talking about us meeting the Lord face to face and us knowing just as we also are known. He is not in any way referring uh, to the canon of Scripture there. Um, it, was, it wasn't even in sight at that time. So please, let, let us not discredit or do away with the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. They are very much in operation today in the church. And as believers, this is one strong reason why we can expect the supernatural through you, through every believer. Now, on the program today, I want to uh, highlight three reasons why, as believers, we can step out boldly uh, to expect God to heal, expect God to cast out devils, expect God to destroy the works of darkness, and manifest the works of God through us, each one of us as believers. Three good reasons. One, number one, is because of the authority that is vested in every believer. You know, every believer has the right to use the name of Jesus. And in fact, we do. Uh, whenever we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. You know, Jesus told us that when you pray, whatever you ask the Father, in my name. So every believer is already uh, using the name of Jesus. Now, we use that name in prayer. In John 14, 13, Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Now, that same name, Jesus said, we will use to cast out devils. And that's what we see in Mark 16, verse 17. He said, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So using that same name, the name of Jesus, every believer can drive out demons, can lay hands on the sick, and can see signs, wonders, and miracles taking place through that name. So just as much as every believer uses the name of Jesus in prayer uh, and to, to ask things of the Lord, uh, we use that name to do the works of God, to do the supernatural. You know, we need to uh, enlarge our spiritual understanding and embrace this truth that as believers, I can use that name. And Jesus said we could. And when you look at the book of Acts, you find believers using the name of Jesus to bring healing, to cast out demons, to work signs, wonders, and miracles. And there are miracles in that name which every believer can use. You know, when you and I say in Jesus' name, we are exercising our delegated authority. We are saying, I'm here representing Jesus. I'm here to do what Jesus would do if he was standing right here, right now. That's what we mean when we say, in Jesus' name. 
So when you lay hands on somebody who is sick, you lay hands on, on them in the name of Jesus. Your only thing, only thing you're authorized to do is to do what Jesus would do if he were standing there, right there, right at, at that moment. What would Jesus do? That's exactly what you should do when you use the name of Jesus. Jesus would heal the sick. Jesus would cast out devils. Jesus would work miracles to meet the needs. So that's what you and I should do when we use the name of Jesus. So that's the first reason. God, Jesus Christ has delegated authority to us as believers by giving us the right to use his name. And that's why every believer can expect to do the works of Jesus in his name. Secondly, the second reason you as a believer can expect the supernatural to man be manifested through you is because of the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, one thing we must understand as believers is this, that when the Lord Jesus walked on this earth, he was fully God, he was fully man, he was God who became man. And yet when he walked on the earth, he did not walk in the attributes of deity. The Bible tells us he laid aside those attributes. And though he was God, he chose not to move in those attributes. And so he physically was limited to one place at one time. He was not omnipresent. Uh, he was not omniscient. He didn't operate in that because he said, you know, I don't know of the times and the seasons that the Father has put in his own uh, power. Uh, he was uh, not omnipotent. He felt tired. He had to rest. He had to sleep. He had to eat. Uh, now, the Almighty God doesn't need to do those things. So literally, when Jesus was walking on the earth, though he was God, he did not operate in the attributes of deity. So therefore, we're saying that when he healed people, he didn't do it as deity. He did it as a man anointed by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus himself said that. And you and I are very aware of the scriptures. Uh, when he began his ministry in uh, that the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 4 that he came in the power of the Holy Spirit. And as he began his ministry, he opens a book to Isaiah and he reads out and he says, in Luke 4, 17 through 18, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to those that are blind and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So Jesus is saying, look, the ministry I'm going to do I'm doing it by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. At one point in Matthew 12, verse 28, when Jesus had cast out demons, he said this. He said, if I by the Spirit of God cast out devils, uh, demons, no doubt the kingdom of God has come to you. So he's making it very clear that it's by the Holy Spirit that he is casting out demons. And he's driving out uh, demons and setting the people free. Acts 10 and verse 38, when Peter himself is describing the ministry of Jesus, he says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil. So when Jesus went about doing his ministry, Peter is saying, God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power. And that's why he went about doing uh, good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil. So we must understand very clearly that Jesus ministered by the power of the Holy Spirit. And here's the wonderful thing. Jesus turned around to us, his disciples, and he said that all of us who believe in him will receive the same power of the Holy Spirit uh, to have that same power flow through our lives. In Acts 1 and verse 8, he told his disciples, he said, you know, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. So he's saying, you are going to have the same power, the power of the Holy Spirit operating through your life, enabling you to be my witnesses. You know, and Jesus talked about this. He references all disciples. You know, some people say, well, that was only for the, for the apostles in the book of Acts. Well, what did Jesus say in John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39? He says, he who believes in me. Do you believe in Jesus? Well, he's talking about you. He says, he who believes in me out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And verse 39 says, But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, which those who believe in him should receive. Uh, for, Jesus was not yet for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So those rivers of living water, which will flow out of every believer, 
is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want us to understand, here's a second reason why every believer can manifest the works of God, can have the supernatural happening through them. It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to believe that you being baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will have the rivers of living water flowing out through you, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit flowing out through you to touch lives and set people free. The third reason, the last one, I want to uh, uh, share with you on why every believer can expect a supernatural is because sonship glory has been given to every believer. You see, when Jesus walked to the earth, he walked as the Son of God. And the Bible tells us in John 1, 14, it says, uh, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That means he walked on the earth with, the, with sonship glory, the one as, of the only, as of the only begotten of the Father. And this glory was revealed, this glory was manifested through mighty miracles. John 2 verse 11 says that Jesus manifested his glory by doing the miracles. Now, when Jesus prayed the high priestly prayer in John 17 verse 5, he makes it very clear that this sonship glory was different from the glory that he had as deity. So he prays to the Father. He says, Father, give me back the glory that I had with you before the world was. That means on the earth, he had something or he did not have something which he had before. He was walking in sonship glory. This was different from the glory of the deity. And he was praying to the Father saying, Father, I want that glory back, which of course the Father gave to him when he ascended into heaven. But before he ascended to heaven, Jesus said something very important in John 17, 22. He prayed to the Father and he says, Father, the glory which you have given me, I have given them. That means the sonship glory with which Jesus walked on the earth was released to all believers, to the people of God. And so you as a believer, you are born of God, you are a partaker of divine nature, and you are a possessor of sonship glory. And one of the ways the sonship glory is manifested or is expressed is through the miracles, the same way it happened through the life of Jesus. So three reasons why you as a believer can have the supernatural happening through you. One, you have authority vested in you by, by God giving you the right to use the name of Jesus. Two, you have the power of the Holy Spirit that will flow through you. Three, you are a possessor of sonship glory, which manifests itself through mighty miracles, uh, signs and wonders, just as in the life of Jesus. I trust that you were enriched by the program today as we challenged you saying that the supernatural can take place through you as a believer. And we give you three solid reasons from the scriptures on why you can expect God to use you to do mighty works. Let's pray together. And I want to pray that God will touch those of us, those of you who are watching or listening. And if you need the touch of God, I'm going to pray a simple prayer. But I believe that if you will agree with me, whatever healing you need, whatever deliverance you need will take place right now as we pray. I also pray that God will encourage you and equip you and release you to do mighty things in His name. Let's pray. Father, I just pray for every person listening. Lord, if there are people who need healing, who need deliverance, who need miracles in their lives, by the authority of Jesus' name, I command them healed. I command every sickness and disease broken off of their lives. I declare every oppressive work of the enemy broken. I command every foul demonic spirit oppressing them to leave now. Fear and torment and oppression leave. I command chronic illnesses to be healed in the name of Jesus. I command paralysis to be undone so that there is full restoration of the uh, function of the limbs in the name of Jesus. And God release miracles those who need to be brought out of troubled situations, let your salvation come. Do these things, Father, for each one listening. And I pray this with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. Until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. We are in a crucial time in history where the urgency to fulfill God's mandate of reaching souls and making disciples has never been greater and more urgent. For this, we're getting ready to scale up 
and build APC World Outreach and Equipping Center. This will serve as an equipping center and a mission space using state-of-the-art technology to train, equip, release, and support ministers across our nation and across the globe. In phase one of this project, our goal is to acquire approximately five to six acres of land. That's the first step. In phase two, we are going to set up our Bible college and a media center. In phase three, we will be building our sanctuary where our church family can come together, be trained, equipped, nurtured, and cared for. To make this vision happen, we need your partnership. We know that this is going to take some amount of sacrifice, but remember, every investment you make today will reap great rewards for the Kingdom of God in the near future. You can go to our church website, apcwo.org slash build to impact page and get information on how to make your contribution or make your pledge of what you will be able to give in the months to come. We look forward to your support and prayer. We want to thank you in advance for what you will do to see this vision happen. Together, let's build to impact. All People's Church is happy to announce the release of three new publications, The Father's Love, Baptism in the Holy Spirit, and Gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are available for free. These resources are ideal for personal study, for use in small groups, churches, and ministries. You can download them at apcwo.org slash publications or request a free copy by writing to us at contact at apcwo.org.